Now, Mercedes SUVs, they're typically big, bulky. They have a lot of road presence and they're quite spacious. But one thing they are not is compact and stylish. Well, that's set to change. At the opposite end of the spectrum, we have this, the Mercedes GLA. And we are driving it exclusively on Indian soil. Let's see what it's like. The GLA with its swoopy, sleek shape is more of a crossover than a Pakka SUV. It's pretty compact too, but looks much bigger than it actually is. And in fact, it's quite an attention grabber. Just look at some of the design elements. The GLA's nose gets prominent power bulges on the bonnet, a chisel bumper, special bisene on headlamps, and a chrome surround for the lower air intake. The smart plastic cladding for the wheel arches and door sills, aluminum roof rails, and the large 18-inch alloys add to the GLA's crossover credentials. The rear looks smart too, with its split tail lights and distinctive chrome apron. The wide tailgate also offers easy access to the large 421-litre boot. Well, the interiors are similar to the A-Class. In fact, they're actually identical. And that's not surprising because the GLA is actually based on the A-Class platform and both the cars share common bits and pieces. But the GLA is going to be far better equipped than the A-Class now don't look at what we've got over here because this is actually the homologation vehicle. It's a lower spec version. We've pulled this car out well before the launch and the final version, the version you get in the showroom will have much better equipment and much plusher material inside as well. But what will be same are bits like this, the turbine style aircon vents, which really feel good to operate. The steering wheel, that's also great to grip and the dials as well, they really look cool. But if there's one thing I don't like, it's this display unit. It looks like an aftermarket job and looks like it's been tacked on. The big difference really over the A-Class is the seating position. In the GLA, you definitely sit a lot higher and that really gives you good visibility outside. Placing the parking brake on the dashboard and the gear shift on the steering column frees up lots of space in the center console, which houses a useful concealable box and a pair of cup holders. The plastics feel like they've come from more expensive mugs and bits like the metallic finish plastic strip that runs across the dashboard is an example of the top class materials used all over. Now when you get into the back seat, you understand that this is really a compact SUV. Quite frankly, space is at a premium. There's not too much room over here. Legroom is also limited, so is headroom. But having said that, this definitely feels more spacious than the A-Class. And that's partly down to this massive panoramic roof, which gives you a sense of airiness. It really gives you more of a sense of openness. The seats are nicely cushioned. They don't feel too firm. There is a bit of a snug fit. There's not too much under thigh support. And quite frankly, it's people of my height who can feel comfortable here. The GLA will be launched in India with two engines. The GLA 200 CDI, powered by a 2.2-litre common rail diesel motor, is likely to be the practical choice. But the petrol motor in the GLA 200 I'm driving right now is likely to be the enthusiast choice. And that's because it's pretty peppy. This motor, the one in the GLA, is much more powerful. In fact, developing a little over 180 bhp, you can feel the difference the minute you floor the throttle. There's really a strong surge in every gear. A little bit of torque steer as the wheel fights to put all that torque down. And while it's pretty refined at low revs, the minute you extend it beyond 5,000, it does take on a bit of a raucous note. The strong mid-range of this motor makes everyday driving quite effortless and it perfectly suits the role of a crossover urban SUV. Performance is pretty impressive on the highway too, where the GLA 200 cruises quite adeptly, with strong overtaking capability just a flex of the right foot away. 
Acceleration is pretty strong with the 0 to 100 dash clipped in a smidgen over 8 seconds. There's no let up in shove and 160 kph is dispatched in a brisk 21.41 seconds with the smooth 7 speed gearbox providing seamless upshifts. It's a twin clutch unit. It's pretty smooth, does the job for normal driving. It's effortless, you can hardly feel the gear shifts. It's only when you want to drive a bit in a hurry, you want to push it a bit, that this transmission feels a bit reluctant, especially when you're downshifting at high revs. For the Indian market, the GLA will come with only front wheel drive and there's no formatic option for now. That's a bit of a shame because with all-wheel drive, you could certainly make better use of the power like on the wet and uneven roads today. However, the thinking is that since the GLA will be used mainly in cities, there's no real need for the extra hardware and cost. Even without four-wheel drive, the GLA is surprisingly adept on the rough stuff. Despite riding on strictly tarmac tyres and driven by just the front wheels, it clambered up a muddy track to our secret filming location with remarkable ease. Now riding on these large 18-inch wheels, the GLA has a certain maturity about the way it rides. It tackles our roads absolutely fantastically. In fact, we are on a really bad bit of road just outside Mumbai. The monsoons have made an absolute mess of it and there's absolutely no problem. The GLA is just coasting over it. It's only really sharp edges that this car feels a bit skittish and those bumps really then thumb through. Back on tarmac, the GLA continued to impress with the confidence it gave on an undulating and gently winding road. The steering isn't crisp or full of feel, but it weights up with a nice consistency and is fairly accurate. The GLA also gripped the wet tarmac fairly well and for a car that sits pretty high, body roll is not excessive either. Prices haven't been announced yet and it will be interesting to see how Mercedes responds to the price war in the compact luxury segment triggered by the Audi A3 sedan. But the GLA's most obvious rivals are the BMW X1 and the Audi Q3. And the GLA will be pegged against these cars. The Mercedes GLA. Well, it's more of a crossover than a true blue SUV. But also, it's much more than an A-class on stilts. It's got a much stronger engine, so performance is truly impressive. It also rides and handles like a much bigger car. But the real talking point of the GLA is the styling. Quite simply, there's nothing that looks quite as good in this category. And priced competitively, Mercedes could have another winner on its hands. <laughs>